All right, take your Bibles and turn to Psalm chapter 57. Psalm chapter 57. And uh, this, is, this is a just a tremendous encouragement, uh, delightful psalm, delightful psalm. Um, and so uh, you're going to find that David uh, is, and I'm just going to, for sake of time this evening, um, give you some background. I think it's around 1 Samuel uh, chapter 24. Uh, David is uh, fleed from Gath. David has gone to the wilderness of En Gedi, and there's a cave there. And David is in the cave of En Gedi, and um, he is just uh, he's going through so many emotions, going through so many feelings. He's got Saul wanting to kill him. He's got an army that's chasing after him. He's got people that have betrayed him. Uh, it's just like, you know, what in the world can, can go on next? He's come from uh, the Philistine, uh, one of the Philistine capital cities of Gath, and uh, he's on the run. He's, it's just all the things that could go wrong uh, are, are going wrong. And in this cave of experience, if this is uh, tying into where David is in Psalm 57, and the subscription talks about him uh, fled from Saul, he fled from Saul in a cave. And so we're looking here at En Gedi. When David's with his men, the amazing thing about this is Saul went into that very cave where David is, and basically, uh, to be appropriate, he went in there to, to use the restroom, uh, and then it seems as though he, 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 lied down, he laid down for a nap. And while he was sleeping, David went and cut a piece of his clothing off the bottom part. And uh, even when David did this, he, he felt bad because he did not want to overstep his bounds. God is the one that is in total control. And uh, David felt so bad that his men, wanted, his men wanted David to kill him. He's like, you know, God's, and they use spiritual language, God has put Saul in your hands. Why don't you take care of this? And David, David said, I'm not going to touch God's anointed. I'm not going to touch the one that God has put, put, put in charge. This is God's anointed. My time's coming. I know that God has placed me as king over Israel, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to deal with Saul. I'm going to let God deal with Saul. And so this is the setting where there's so many emotions going on in David's life, so many going on in his heart, and it's just a beautiful prayer uh, to the Lord when, when he's, he was in a cave. Have you ever been in a cave? Now, I'm not talking about the spelunking type cave, although those, I'll be honest with you, uh, they're pretty cool. They get a little bit freaky, but uh, they're pretty cool. If you've never, anybody ever been caving or spelunking? Okay, uh, okay, wow. And, and they are pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the part I don't like is the claustrophobic when you get into a real tight space and you can't move and they think it's so cool to put you in this crawling thing and you got somebody in front of you and you got somebody behind you and it seems like the guy in front of you just got stuck and you can't go anywhere. I, that's when I just about freaked out. Uh, but this is not spelunking. Uh, this is going to have some of the same characteristics. This is not the, hol- this is not the inn called the Holiday Inn. Again, I'm trying to be very appropriate here, but uh, Saul went into that cave, if this is either in En Gedi, which I think it very well could be, or it's the the cave of Dullam. And either one of those, Saul went into that cave to use the restroom. And then they found, he found a place where he, he, could, he could also lie down. But this, this is not a clean, uh, you know, Hampton Inn type of deal. This is a very nasty. It's not the best of, best of locations where he's at. It's going to be very dark. Uh, they, they, they didn't have, you know, the clap on and the, all of a sudden the cave lights came on. There was none of that kind of stuff. I mean, this is, this is, this is take yourself and put it in this setting. And David's in a position where he's in a cave. He's in a time of darkness. Uh, he's in time of loneliness. Well, you say if it's in the cave of En Gedi, there were some men with him. Have you ever been around people and felt all alone? I see people almost every Sunday. And maybe I miss it. I mean, I'm just a human. But uh, if, if I can put my hand on it, it is, it, is, it is heartbreaking to me that you can have people sitting in, in an auditorium full of people. And the look in their eyes is they're all alone. There is such an emptiness there. And David's battling loneliness, he's battling his cave, he's battling his situation. We have got so many in our church that are, body, uh, that are battling sicknesses right now. That are battling recoveries right now. There is, there is surgery after surgery, there is list after list, there is person after person. In our church there are new cases, not just the ones that we've been dealing with that have been going through cancer. New cases of people that have come down with cancer and been diagnosed with cancer. And trying to talk to them and love on them and pray with them. Maybe, maybe your cave is a cave of health. Maybe it's a cave of discouragement. David's going to talk about in this psalm that he's bowed down. Let's talk about he's, he, he's discouraged, he's depressed within his heart, within his life. And there's a cave. 
There's a cave that you're in with your finances. That no matter what you do, it seems like you can't get ahead. And about the time you get ahead, the government finds out about it, and they find how to take just a little bit more. Can somebody say amen? Are you with me? Amen. So all of a sudden, what is your cave tonight? What, what, what cave are you in? A cave of your thoughts. Cave of your emotions. Cave of your challenges. Cave of the sin that most easily besets you. Cave of a situation that doesn't seem like it's ever going to change. Cave of a situation that doesn't seem like it's ever going to get better. Cave of a person that you would want to do something about. And you feel utterly hopeless because there's nothing that you can do. Listen as David goes through this. Listen to David's heart as he is using the Holy Spirit to bring to us Psalm chapter 57. Listen to the tenor of it. And then I want you to take notice. When does it change? When does it change for David? When does it change for David? Because where you find in this, where it changes for David is where it changes for you and I. Psalm 57 verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth, performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Then he says, pause, meditate, think on this with the word Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions. Notice the imagery of verse 4, the opposition against him. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue is a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. That's the discouragement we were talking about. They've digged a pit before me in the midst uh, whereof they are fallen themselves. Selah. Verse 7, my heart is fixed. O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake up, my glory, awake psaltery and harp. I will, myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. And so when he starts off this psalm, as we go back to verse 1, as we start off this psalm, David, David's in a cave. David's in a situation that's bigger than he is. He's in a situation that is absolutely overwhelming him. <clears throat> and when our hearts are overwhelmed, we need to be led to the rock that's higher than we are. And David is, says, he says to me, be merciful unto me, God. Be, be gracious to me. Uh, have you ever, you ever gone through a situation you're like, God, can I just get a little bit of grace? C could I just get a little bit of grace in all this? Could I get a little bit of help? God, can I get some help in all this? You've had a situation in your life, you've had a situation in your family, you've had a situation at the workplace, and you're like, God, can I just get a little bit of, I, can I just get a little bit of grace? The older I get, the more I'm understanding why we go to what's called the throne of grace to obtain help and mercy in the time of need. He's like, God, can I get some mercy? God, would you be merciful to me? Would you be gracious to me? Would you be kind to me? Would you be good to me? Dear God in heaven, would you give me a little bit of help? Please, God, would you give me a little bit of help? He says, the reason my soul, my soul trusteth in thee. Lord God, I don't understand all this going on. I, I, I didn't script all this going on. I don't even like all this going on. But God, I trust in you. God, I trust you. I trust you, God. I don't understand it all. I need some grace. I need some help. I need you to bear witness with my spirit. I need some, I, 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 I need some divine intervention in my life. God, I'm trusting you. I'm not going to turn my back on you. I'm not going to run away from you. I'm going to run to you. God, I'm going to trust in you. In the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. God, I need some protection. God, you know all these people that are against me? You know these people, David's life? You know people, these people are literally trying to kill me, God? I'm going I'm to hide it under the shadow of your wings uh, for protection uh, until these calamities uh, be overpassed, until these calamities are, are done, until this trial's over with. Uh, I'm going to give you some very sad news, and then I'm going to give you some very good news. Are you ready? Very sad news first. I was talking with a man. Uh, and our situation was nowhere near like the depth of what some of y'all are going through. And me and Miss Stacy uh, were going through just a little bit of a challenge with uh, something that happened to one of our children. Just, it, was, it was just a little bit. Of, it was a challenge. And, um, you know, we asked, the, can, I just, can I be honest tonight? Are we all good? We all, man, we asked some of the dumbest qu questions as Baptist Christians. Man, alive. And I, I've gotten to a point in place that when I find myself habitually asking the question, you'll hear me. Some of y'all have probably heard me followed up with, I am so sorry I just asked that. That is the dumbest thing I could have asked just then. And you know what that question is? How you doing? 
how in the world do you think I'm doing? And there was a, there was a time, and uh, a very godly, good, this is a uh, very godly, godly businessman, um, very godly man. I still, uh, when our schedules can get together, we meet 6 o'clock um, over at, at, at one of the restaurants in Conyers uh, in the morning for, for breakfast and just to, just to talk and encourage each other. Godly man. And, and he, he looked at me, and it was one of those days where, where we all mean the right things. And he says, how you doing? And it was, it was just, Brother Greg, it was just the wrong timing for that question. You know, I was taking care of Ethan. I, was t- I felt like I was taking care of Stacy. I was trying to travel. I was trying to help pastors. I was trying to, you know, war evangelism. I mean, it's like all these things. And he, and he says, how's it going? And all I could get out was. <laughs> and then I just started crying. And, you know, grown men next to the, you know, how you doing? You start blubbering on somebody. You don't do that, okay? And he's like, how you doing? And it's like, when he asked me that, it just all came. And I said, and I said with tears going on my cheeks, I said, It's terrible. I was like, it is absolutely terrible. I was like, I can't take another surgery. I can't take another doctor's visit. I can't take another gripe. I can't take another complaint. I can't take another pastor. I can't take another meeting. I can't take another message. I said, man, I am done. And I know that we're not supposed to be there. I know that. I know that. I'm being honest with you. I was like, and I went, and I started crying. I was like, I'm done. And he looked at me. He gave me some very, very challenging news. And then he gave me some very, very good news. And he looked at me, and if you knew this man, you could see him saying it. You'd be able to hear him saying it. He looked at me and says, well, now, buddy, you're not getting out of this. And everything in my heart at that time, oh, golly, have you ever just wanted to unclothe yourself from the situation? Ah, okay. He's like, you're not getting out of this. And then he said these words, but you are going to get through this. And I look at you, and I give you the bad news first. You're not getting out of this. As pastor, right now, right now, there's, there's several. I beg God on behalf of the families in our church. I'm like, God, please, please, if it, if it be your will. I've said all the right, I've said all the right verbiage. I, I've said it all the right way. I mean, I have posed it as best I can. But you know, the truth of the matter is, it's not the will of God for them to get out of it. It is the will of God for them to get through it. And you've got things going on in your life. You've got a cave in your life. Now, if it's sin, we know that we're not talking about that. But there are situations of life where, do you see where he's like, you know, be merciful unto me, God. Uh, I'm I'm trusting you, God. I need your protection. I need your care. Lord, I'm I'm looking for the day that these clouds will be gone and these calamities be overpassed. And it's like David is coming to the understanding and the realization that, you know what? I'm not getting out of this mess. I'm not not getting out of this situation. I'm not getting out of it, but I am going to get through it. And you need to take heart tonight that you're going to get through this thing. It's eating your lunch. It's driving you crazy. It's weighing on your soul. Uh, you know, there, there are things that you, we may not get exempted uh, from whatever you got going on in your life. But I want you to understand this. You're going to get past these calamities. Because greater is he that's within us than he that's within this world. And we can. Now, the, the athletes and other people, they, they take and they sort of misalign the verse. But it doesn't take away from the reality of the verse where he says, I can do all things. Through Christ, who strengtheneth me. And so our strength comes from the Lord. And so David, David's got this cave life. He's like this. He's like, I'm learning some things. I'm learning I need to trust God. I'm going to get through this. I might not get out of it, but I'm going to get through it. Now notice verse 2 with me. Notice what else David's learning how to do. David in verse 2 is learning how to pray. He says, I will cry unto God most high. You know, some people... Excuse me, they, they've got the little, now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And yay, we prayed. That's good for a one-year-old. That's not good for a child of God. And I tell you what these situations help David to learn and what these situations help us to do. It helps us understand God's faithful. God's faithful. And if you've never cried unto the Lord, if you've never cried unto God, if, you, if, that, if this thing does not resonate with your heart, then you've never done it. You will be brought to a situation, this, this groanings which cannot be uttered. There is such a, a, a lamentation of the soul that human words are not even audible from your lips. There is such an expression of the soul that words, mm, they, they, they have a hard time formulating. The English language has a hard time expressing the language of the heart. 
David says, I will cry unto God, the, unto God most high. He's like, I will lay my petitions before God. I will seek the God of heaven because I know that God is the one that performeth all things for me. I know that God's the one that's going to get me through this. I know that God is my very present help in the time of trouble. I know that God in heaven, he finishes what he starts. God is working on your life. God's working on your family. God's working uh, through the situation. God's working. You say, man, this is a blooming cave. Yes, it is. But isn't it amazing? One, one writer said this. His name is Warren Wiersbe. And boy, it was just beautiful. When I was studying through this passage, I just love the way he wrote it. He's like, um, David had such a walk with God that David turned the cave into the Holy of Holies. Because he said it was in the cave. For he came face to face and he met with the God of all glory. You'll learn how to pray during these situations. You'll get away from your own strength. You'll get away from your own mind, might. You'll get away from your own ingenuity. You, how many things have you and I been able to accomplish and solve ourselves? And then we, be, we get brought to situations that are so far beyond us that all they do is bring a lament of our soul. He says, I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. God is going to finish what God in heaven has started. And then he says this. Look at verse 3 with me. He shall send from heaven. God's going to answer. I'm going to pray. God's going to answer. He's like, preacher, does God always answer? Yes. But God doesn't always answer the way that you want him to. God always answers. Somebody looked at me and says, God's not answering me. I was like, I was like yes, he is. You're just not liking the way he's doing it. Now, Charles, Charles Stanley, years and years ago, golly, I, I cannot tell you how many years ago it was, and I can't remember the whole message, but there was a, a part of Charles Stanley's message. I was up in Dalton, I was listening to it on the radio going to Chattanooga, and uh, I, I, just, I, can see, I can just see it. But he was talking about prayer, talking about prayer, and he was talking about God answers prayer in one of three ways, yes, no, or wait. Yes, no, or wait. And we, don't, we like the yes, we don't like the no, and we surely don't like the wait. But he says this, he's, he, he shall send from heaven. God's going to answer. God's going to do what God wants to do because he's God. And God's going to save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. David's like, Saul's lying. God, gossipers are lying. This, David's dealing with so much gossip and backbiting in his life that it's just absolutely incredible. And David's like, I want you to understand, God's going God's to work this out. God's going to take care of all this. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. God's going to give me the strength to endure it. And God's going to let the truth be known. He's like, my soul, he's like, and then he goes back. Look what he does in verse 4. He goes back and notice the expressions. He says, my soul is among lions. Uh, he's like the, the imagery, lions and fire and spears and arrows and swords. I mean, David's like, in every way, in every angle, my life is being pierced through. And so what is his desire through all this? He's like, dear God, through all this mess, through all this garbage, through all this cave life, he's like, God, what I want is this. Be thou exalted, O God. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. God in heaven and earth, I want you to be exalted. I want you to be lifted up. I want you to be praised. I want you to be honored. I want you to be adored. I want your name, God, to be lifted up and to be magnified. He said, and he's back and forth. He's, God, I want you to be glorified. What they're doing, they're laying nets for me, verse 6. They've prepared a net for my steps. My soul is discouraged or bowed down. They've digged a pit for me. They want me to fall in. The funny thing is, they're going to fall in themselves for the very pit that they've, 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 um, they've dug. He's like, I've got swords and spears and fires and pits and people and things and problems. I've got all this stuff around me. He's like, dear God in heaven, I'm in this cave. And he's like, he vacillates. He vacillates. He's like, I'm in this cave, but I want to trust you. I'm in this cave, and they want to kill me. I'm in this cave, and I want to exalt you. I'm in this cave, and I want to, I want to pray to you. God, I'm in this cave, and I want to believe in you and it's like he's going back and forth in these verses and then he hits to me the verse of verses here and he hits verse 7 he hits are y'all with me am I just by myself are y'all with me okay so then we get to verse 7 he says my heart is fixed oh God my heart is fixed um, David had to come to a point in place there that he had to decide something what kind of attitude was he going to have with what he was going through. Chuck Swindoll, Charles Swindoll, I'm not sure which one he goes by, Brother Swindoll. And again, this is from years ago, so if you don't like him today, just grant grace and enjoy the illustration because it's really good what he said. It really is good. Uh, and this is from when I was in my early 20s. And I was doing uh, devotions uh, as a chaplain for the basketball team and, and for the football team. And uh, so I was doing just a lot of reading, trying to get stuff. 
And I came across what he said, and this has been almost 30 years ago, right? He said this, he said, life, life, life is 10% of what happens to you. And I'm sitting there going, how in the world can life be 10% of what happens to you? He said, life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to what happens to you. Brother Danny, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I feel like, a, I feel like, a, I still feel like a young man. I was even a young, 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 young man back then. And I remember sitting there going, okay, let me, let me, let me think about this. Because, I mean, you know, as, as young men, you want to just go ahead and prove everybody wrong, especially well-known preachers. And at that time, he was a very well-known preacher. So I'm sitting there thinking, Miss Kathy, I'm going to prove this well-known preacher wrong. And I'm like, there's no way that life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% the consequences of how you respond to what happens to you. And so I started thinking about it. You know, I, 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 I just have trouble admitting when I'm wrong and somebody else is right. And now at 52 years of age, that brother is right on the money. And, and I would say this without being, you know, argumentative and contentious, uh, just for sake of proving what he's saying is true. Uh, at 52, I'm wondering if life is 5% of what happens to you and 95%. Of how you respond to it. And so David in here, he's like, okay, is the reality that David's in a cave? Is the reality that they're trying to kill him? Is the reality that he's going through a lot of pain? Is the reality that people have turned their back on him? Is the reality that it stinks? Is the reality that it's hard? Is the reality that it's difficult? All of these things are absolutely real. They're, 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 they're very, 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 very real. They're all very, very real. All this stuff is very, very real. But David says, you know what? Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've got to have an attitude adjustment. I've got to get my thoughts right. I've got the, the old time folks, uh, old time folks, I don't know if I said that right. There's an older expression that has been used. I'm not sure if the younger people even know this expression or use it at all. Um, and it's showing how old I am. But uh, I've got I've to take a walk and clear my head. I've got to take a walk and clear my head. Uh, y'all, y'all just told me how old you are too. I've got to clear my head. You know what David had to do right here? David, David had to get out of the blooming cave and David had to clear his head. David had, David had to get his mind right. David's like, man, I'm vacillating. Even in this psalm, there's so many good, good truths in this psalm. That it, you know, it's just so, so many good truths in this psalm. But David's like, I want to do this, and then I want to tell you about my enemies. I want to do this, and I want to tell you about the pits. I want to do this and tell you about my weaknesses. I want to do this. And it's like back and forth and back and forth. And then all of a sudden, it's like a, 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 a pole is placed in his life and concreted. And he's like, you know what? I need to change my attitude on some things. I need to change how I'm looking at some things. Isn't it amazing when you and I change how we look at things, how things change? That didn't sink in. Now, that was so good, I can't repeat it because I can't remember exactly how I just said that. But I know something when it sounded good, and that sounded good. I just can't, I just can't repeat it again. But are you all with me, amen or no? See, I humbly ask you this tonight. You're like, I'm tired of the cave. Well, maybe the cave's not the problem. Maybe the attitude is. Talked to a pastor within the last two weeks that's ready to throw in a towel and quit. And uh, he's like, this, this, and this, 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 and this, right? And I'm like, I was like, I was like you know what is so funny? What is so funny? I was like, the, the place that you're griping about, brother, the people that you're griping about, I was like, you go ahead and resign and see how many, see how many resume that church gets in in seven days. I said, isn't it just a little bit amazing of the place that you want to get out of is a place that other folks want to get in? Hmm. Attitude. Attitude. If I could just get out, get out of what, folks? Is it really the cave? Is it really the place? Is it really the problem? Is it really the, the things that's going on? Is, that really, is that really what you're dealing with? Or tonight, you're like, you like, man, my heart has been so, so fickle. It's been so back and forth. It's been so wanton. I mean, I, what I need to do is I, I, need, I need to make my heart steadfast and strong and sure. I need to change my heart. My heart is my mind, will, and emotions. I need to take all this within me, and I need to decide something. What do you say in the last part of the verse? I will sing. My brother Jason, that right there, you can preach on that. I will, I will sing. He says, it is def- I tell you what I'm going to do. I will sing and I will, the way the wording here is, I will sing and I will give praise. 
I'm going to change my attitude about something, and I am going to absolutely praise God. I'm going to tell you something. The only time I, I there are some people, and I, won't, I hope I say this right, and if it comes out right, I won't be able to say this one again, but it's going to be good. Are you ready? The only time some people are happy is when they're miserable. Are you with me, man? That's deep. I want to see that tweeted somewhere, Brother Bo. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me, man? You ever been around some folks that the only time they're happy is that they're miserable? Chaos rules and reigns, man. Are you, are you happiest when you're most miserable? Do you revel in joy and how bad things are? I pastored a lady one time that was like that, gosh, down in South Georgia. And uh, I just had a look at her one day, and I, you know, I've tried to be very gracious with y'all. I tried to grow in grace. Back then, I just unfortunately needed help with grace. And I'm like, ma'am, I said, I hate to be you, and I hate to be your husband, and I hate to be your kids. I'm like, I have never met somebody in my life that enjoyed misery so much as you do. She wore misery like a red badge of courage, and everything had to be absolutely horrific. And it was her insecurity because that's how she felt like she got recognized that if she made everything so bad, people would feel sorry for her. And that's what she thrived off of. Don't be, don't be one that's happiest when you're most miserable so that you can tell everybody else how, how miserable you are, hoping maybe you can, make, they can make, you can make them miserable too. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Don't, I, see, so I, I can't say that again, so I hope it came out right. But my heart is fixed. What's your attitude like tonight? Because now notice the progression as I close. My time is gone. Notice the progression of this thing. He says, I've I, I got to change my attitude. I've got to change how I'm looking at stuff. I've got to change my mind, my will, my emotions, my thoughts. My, I've got to change some things. I'll tell you what I'm going to start doing. I will sing. And we're going to keep on going, Trayvon, with these verses, if you don't mind, buddy. I will sing. And I will give praise. He's like, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to wake up. Tomorrow morning when I get up, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to wake up my glory. I'm going to get, uh, one of our ladies has said a phrase that has stuck with me, and I love it, and I wish I came up with it, but it's not mine. It's Harriet's, and that is I'm going to get my praise on. I don't know why I like that so much, but I want a T-shirt with that. I'm going to get my praise on. He's like, awake up. Awake up my glory. Awake psaltery. Awake harp. Awake the instruments. Y'all get up. Sun's shining. We're going to sing. We're going to praise God. We're going to rejoice in Jesus. I had an attitude adjustment. I'm going to start looking at the dark side of life. I'm going to see the God side of life. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to praise the Lamb of God as we keep on going. Next verse. He says, I will praise thee, O Lord. I'm, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to praise you among the people. And you can't get out of the Bible without getting into mission somehow. He says, I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. And let me just stop right there. You know what I miss? I told 11 o'clock service. Had a tremendous 11 o'clock service. I'll tell you what I miss. I miss the old-fashioned good testimony services. Now you can't have them because somebody say something stupid. I don't mean it ugly. Y'all stick with me. You remember the old... Did I say that wrong? But y'all with me. I'm talking about the old time. I mean, the Holy Ghost filled ones where folks were giving glory to God and not to their sin... So when, when they started giving, man, you, people give word of testimony now. Within five seconds, you know whether it's them or God. I miss, I miss old-time testimony services. I, I, I know I, I've got a little old school in me. I miss them. I, I, I miss them where you got to start getting four or five guys to, to, to pass the microphones around and folks standing up. And I'm not saying tears are godly, but some folks getting up with some tears and, and a broken heart and just giving glory and honor to God and praising Jesus. And there's just such a stillness and a sweetness and a warmth that fills the house of God. And your heart's bear, bearing witness. And instead of, instead of the pulpit ministering to the, to, the, to the pews, it's the people in the pews ministering to each other. And, I, man, I miss those. I, just, I miss the sweet testimony times. The testimony times of what God in heaven's doing and, and how God in heaven's working. And I wonder if we don't have testimonies anymore because is he not working in our lives i miss those services i really miss those services and he says what he's having right here is this do you realize david's having him a testimony service david's like i'm going to praise the old lord among the people i gotta tell somebody what god's doing i gotta tell somebody how good god is i gotta tell somebody what god did more I, I love hearing mark mark talks about you know i was witnessing this folks or witnessing this person i'm just telling about the goodness of god has god been good to you amen or no has god been good to you amen or no well then go tell somebody about him Stop griping about everything. Stop complaining about everything. Stop judging everything. Stop dissecting everything. And get your praise on and go tell somebody about the good things of God. Because I'm going to be honest with you. The Jesus that some of y'all, you act like you serve and, and the Jesus that you want people to surrender to, I, they wouldn't surrender to Jesus. If I wouldn't say, I wouldn't surrender to your Jesus because you don't like him anyway. I 
I should have eaten supper before church. Are y'all with, but are y'all with me? Amen or no? No. Man, I'm just full. My heart is so full. I will praise the old Lord among the people. I will sing uh, unto thee among the nations. I've got a testimony. I've got to testify for God. For thy mercy is great into the heavens and thy truth unto the clouds. God in heaven, you're going to show your grace. You're going to show your mercy. The truth is going to be known. God, you're going to make all this come together for your good and for your glory. And then the last verse, notice what he says. He's, do you see? It's almost like the robustness within his soul. All this is swelling from verse 7. All this is starting to, to roll. And it's building and it's billowing and it's, it's beautiful. And he comes to the end of his song. This song, he says, oh, can you hear the expression of his soul? He's like, I am fixed on God. I'm going to change my attitude. I'm going to get my praise on. I'm going to testify. I'm going to tell somebody about the goodness of God. I'm going to change how I'm looking at everything. I'm going to change how I'm viewing everything. Oh, God, what I want above all other things is not to get out of the cave. I've gotten away from, Lord, I've gotten away from me. Dear God in heaven, be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens and let thy glory be above all the earth. It's amazing when I change my attitude, I change my focus from my problems to my Savior. Father, we love you. Oh, beautiful psalms you give us. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the word of God. It is such an awesome, amazing book that you've given us to show your love. And I pray, Father, that its words would burn within us. Now, i got to be honest, God, my heart is so heavy uh, for people that are going through some things. My soul, dear God, I ask you to help them and strengthen them. And God, that you would whisper sweet comfort into their hearts. Lord, that you would reveal uh, your realness, that you don't leave us nor forsake us. I pray, Lord, for, for our attitudes. Lord, I, maybe I could have said it a different way. I don't know, but, Lord, that we would change how we view things and we would look through our God goggles and we would look through them through what you can do and what you desire and your glory and your exaltation. Oh, God, please help us to look through things through the lenses of your grace and your mercy and your truth. Lord, people are hurting. People watching my way of live stream. People are hurting. People need a touch from you, God. And uh, Lord, they're not going to be able to change the cave. They in the cave. Uh, but they're going to get out of this thing. And uh, Father, you're going to lift those calamities. Uh, you're going to give them some breathing room. And Lord, in the midst of all the trouble, you're going to put your wings around them. And you're going to speak peace into their heart. And you're going to give them strength in their soul. And you're going to let them know that they're going to be all right. Because, God, you never leave us, and you never forsake us. You are that very present help in the time of trouble. Help us to exalt you and glorify you. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen.